All right, so a new gun has erupted onto the scene in Helldivers 2, and no, it's not this new grenade pistol that everybody was talking about prior to the most recent war bond that just came out. This actually is this big behemoth right here. Now, this gun is not rated E for everybody or every situation for that fact, but I'm telling you, this weapon has a certain punch to it that you can't let go of because it's so much fun and you're not going to get it with any other gun in the game. Hell, this thing punches so hard that it ends up propelling your character forward. Seriously though, I think that this is a glitch and not intended because every explosive weapon in this DLC does this for some odd reason, so just take that as a joke for now. Anyways, let's talk about the R36 Eruptor. R36 Eruptor has a damage of 380, capacity is 5 rounds, reserve ammo is 12, recoil is 75, fire rate is 25 rounds per minute, fire type is bolt action, damage type is explosive, and then penetration is medium armor penetration. So starting off with my general opinions for the weapon so far is that if you thought the JAR 5 Dominator had poor ergonomics and felt clunky to use overall, just use this thing for a little while and you'll go running back to the Dominator. Now, I think these explosive weapons are often misunderstood at times because they're not supposed to feel super twitchy or these run and gun type weapons. They're actually supposed to feel a little clunky to use because they're so reliant on high precision shots and taking your time lining up your shots. Now this weapon is classified as medium armor penetration and unlike other medium armor penetration weapons, this has a very high one shot potential. This one shot potential is actually pretty consistent and you'll find yourself one shotting all sorts of medium armored units like the Striders, the Hive Guards, the Devastators, and even those annoying ass bug spitters that we all hate. This weapon does struggle a bit on the higher tier difficulties because the mob density is immense, the elite density is immense, and trying to run a bolt action, slow, clunky gun is a bit of a disadvantage. But again, if you play with a little bit more passive of approach, it's not too bad. You just have to understand the weapon and what it is because it operates more like a stratagem more than it does a primary weapon at times. So one of my early initial impressions of this weapon when I was first going through all the statistics was when I saw the magazine count of only being five, I really thought that this weapon was gonna suffer badly from ammo constraint issues. Now this may feel different from person to person, but personally while using the weapon, I don't feel like ammo was an issue at all. You get plenty of reserve clips, so you can actually reload earlier if you want to, so you don't have to worry about, man, I don't want to reload and waste a clip. And then the bolt action keeps you from those having those moments where you're expending a whole clip of ammunition, panic firing because you're trying to deter some enemies in front of you. You have to be a little bit more thoughtful with it, so you may shoot a shot, then you switch to your sidearm, unload your sidearm, and then you can switch back to the to the Eruptor and then finish off an enemy or something like that. It's just, the gameplay's a lot different because of the bolt action mechanic. Overall, the slower playstyle of this weapon has been honestly a big adjustment for me, but it's personally been kind of nice to switch to something a little bit different. You're rewarded for playing slower, lining up your shots and playing more passively with this weapon. You can also one shot a lot of enemies in the game, take, a, take out objectives, and in general, take a more passive approach to the game like I said before. So it's just a little bit of a different playstyle it really rewards solo gameplay more than anything. So if you want to be a lone ranger in your squad and go take out objectives while the rest of your team focus on another objective, you can do that. If you want to play solo and play passively, you can do that. This gun offers a lot of versatility in your loadout. So to go into some depth about the play style with this weapon and also give you my overall loadout recommendations that I've enjoyed so far with this weapon, again, this weapon does offer you a unique opportunity to play some different ways than you've played before. Since this weapon has the ability to take out many objectives in the game, blow up doors, and in general, it's very effective at dealing with medium armored units, you are free to use a lot of different things in your equipment slot. One example being is this loadout that I really loved running against the bots recently, is that I'm running obviously the Eruptor in the primary slot, my secondary is the P19 Redeemer, my grenade of choice is the Sun Grenade, my armor of choice is light armor, and the stratagems I really use a lot very consistently are the shield backpack and even the rail gun, and then whatever else you want to run. I run the Eagle Airstrike a lot, I run the 380 Barrage, just run anything in these other two slots. The P19 really helps out a lot with dealing with enemies when they get close. When you're in the middle of a bolt action reload, just switch to your P19 and blow the enemies away. 
or if an enemy gets too close and you don't want to risk blowing yourself up with this weapon, just switch to the P19 and you can just clean up anything in your face. I'm going to admit this, I'm absolutely obsessed with using light armor in this game, so I'm always going to recommend people use light armor in pretty much any situation because the speed you get is just so much more useful than the damage mitigation at this point. However, you can run anything you want here. Just keep in mind that one of the main suggestions I have here is try to run armor with the fortified passive that gives you the 50% explosive resistance because it's just tremendously grateful against tanking missiles and the turret towers. On top of running this shield backpack, this makes you a little bit overpowered against the bots in my opinion. Using the Eruptor does free up your grenade slot so you're not forced to run impact or the high explosive grenade to be able to take care of the fabricators. You can just use the Eruptor to do that. And it actually gives you the opportunity to use the stun grenade guilt free because the stun grenade paired with this weapon is really overpowered. For example, you got devastators in front of you, go ahead and throw a stun out there, stun them up, Take your time because it takes about two to three seconds, line up the shot and just one shot of Devastator. It's absolutely addictively fun to use. So the great thing about the shield backpack is that not only does it give you an insane amount of damage mitigation that you wouldn't have if you didn't have it, but the other thing that it gives you too is just a few seconds to line up a shot if you're being bombarded with bullets. So if you're out of sun grenades or something like that, you need to take your time lining up a shot so you can take out a Devastator or line up a shot on a Hulk or something. You can do that because the backpack gives you a few seconds to do that because again this weapon does take a minute to aim so having the shield backpack to be able to deter and mitigate some of those bullets really is useful now the rail gun is a pretty interesting choice here because i know a lot of people have been saying use a machine gun because yeah you're using a heavy weapon so use a machine gun to give you some bullet spray potential well against the bots machine guns are just practically useless and against most of them so i just don't really want to run them but i love the rail gun because in this slot, you can one-shot hulks and every medium armored unit just like you can with the Eruptor. Now the Eruptor does struggle a bit against hulks, it's not great against them, so you can just use this railgun and if you hit them in the eye, boom, they're dead. And the cool thing is that the railgun has a lot more ergo or ergonomics compared to the Eruptor. While the Eruptor can shoot things from much farther away and actually keep the medium and long range units at bay, you can just use the railgun just to get some quick cleanup because not only is it more ergonomic, it reloads faster, and just in general it punches a bit harder, which is awesome. So it just is a good one-two punch because you shoot the Eruptor, then you go and get into railgun mode, and that actually is a really sneaky, effective combination. So some examples for the bugs is you're gonna use basically the same loadout. The only thing I would say is you're gonna swap out the railgun for a machine gun if you want, the Quasar or the Arc Thrower. I personally love the Quasar against the bugs because it really is effective against the Chargers. It's not as consistently effective against Bile Titans, unfortunately. I just haven't had a great time using it, but it still can do something against the Bile Titans, which is nice. Now the Arc Thrower is a sneaky good weapon and it was better before the nerf, but it's still good. So it's great against just cleaning up a lot of enemies at once. It can take down chargers and stun them a little bit. It's okay against Bile Titans. And in general, the Arc Thrower is just a fun weapon to use against the bugs. Now with the machine guns, they're okay. They're just kind of boring to use. They're good at cleaning up mobs and small unit enemies, but they're not great at dealing with elites. They just don't do enough damage. The heavy machine gun, is a little bit more effective against the Chargers butts. But then outside of that, they're just kind of like a boring safe choice. So I would use either the Quasar or the Arc Thrower, probably the Quasar in most situations. So some final noteworthy things that I wanna mention about this weapon, again, from my experience of using it so far, is I wanted to re-emphasize this point first. This, again, is a low ergonomic weapon. It has slower side-to-side -side movement, slower aim down sight, slower movement in general. So just keep that in mind. This is, gonna, this is a precision weapon that requires you to line up your shots, and it's not one of those run-and-gun type weapons you're used to. The great thing is that this weapon has actually a quick reload, especially if you're reloading it when it's not fully empty. This weapon has a much higher splash damage compared to the other explosive weapons in the game like the Jar 5 Dominator or the Plasma Shotgun and multi-kills way more consistently than both these weapons. However, this splash damage can do a lot of damage to you or flat out one-shot you, so you need to be careful and mindful of how close enemies are to you, so you don't want to be firing this thing at close range, basically. There is an annoying glitch in the game and I think it's affecting all explosive weapons because I've had this happen with the grenade pistol even 
is that when you shoot the weapon, you will randomly shoot forward with this weapon like you got exploded or something, and it's kind of annoying, but I feel like it's going to be fixed fairly soon. You do get several different sighting options. There's a 50, 100, and 200 meter option, and, you, and the gun is only semi-automatic. This weapon surprisingly can destroy quite a few different objectives in the game. Like I mentioned, the doors, the fabricators, the bug holes, and a few other mission objectives in the game. If you use the Dominator, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say this, but while you're using this weapon in first person, aiming down sights, there is a small explosion on this weapon when you fire the bullet, which is kind of annoying. It obscures your view a little bit, so that's something to be mindful of. And then, speaking of which, the bullets travel pretty slow, so you need to be mindful of that when you're shooting something from distance. You need to give a little bit of lead to your bullets. Just to clear something up, this weapon does not penetrate charger armor, but it does two-shot chargers in the butt. If you get a really good shot on the backside of chargers, you'll two-shot their butt and kill them, which is pretty awesome. So in conclusion, this gun completely surprised me overall. I was not expecting this gun to be not only as good as it is, but as fun as it is, because they have not introduced anything like this so far into Helldivers too. Now you would think that the crossbow or the grenade pistol would be the most unique things to come into the game, but they're very average in my opinion when compared to this weapon. Not only does this weapon hit like a Mack truck, it just gives you a completely different way to play the game, which I thoroughly enjoy and I love. So anyways, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Have you been using the Eruptor weapon so far? Are you actually enjoying it? Are you not enjoying it? Let me know down in the comments below. Do all the YouTube stuff and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.